Hello and welcome to Olivia Rose Floral Designs. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful hand-tied bridal bouquet. And we're going to be using roses, eucalyptus, wax flower, gypsophilia and some beautiful veronicas. I will also be showing you how to attach your ribbons and to add an additional beautiful jewellery statement piece. Hope you enjoy! Okay, so I'm going to start with my eucalyptus. So as you can see, they're quite big stems, so I'm just going to simply strip them down. Um, I'm going to go for the smaller pieces for the centre and get rid of any additional leaves that are unwanted. Okay, so I'm going to start with them. When making a hand tied bouquet, um, I'm right handed, so I will hold the bouquet in my left hand and insert the flowers with my with my right hand. Okay, so my first rose is quite a nice big open rose. So I'm gonna remove some of the guard petals and just open it up so it's, it's perfect. And then I'm going to place the stems at an angle like so. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that as we work our way around. I'm gonna then go for another rose because the, the main flower in this bouquet are roses. So again, remove any guard petals, that's these greener ones around the edge. And these doesn't damage the rose at all. Okay, so again, insert that one at an angle. Okay, so you can see your stems aren't straight. If you insert all your flowers at a straight angle, the heads are a lot more than likely to snap off. Okay, so they do need to be at an angle. So now we're going to go for some Veronica. Just take these little pieces off, like so. Okay. So I'm going to go for some Egyptophilia. And again, with the Egyptophilia, it does come in rather large bunches. So you just simply strip down the piece that you require. Like so. Okay. And you can manoeuvre the flowers around to sit wherever you'd like them to be. Okay, so I'm going for another rose. Let's take this off like so. And I'm going to place that one just behind like so. A piece of Veronica. Okay, I'm just going to place my flowers as I go and where I see them best fit. I'm now going to add some wax flower. So again, these come in really large strips. I've had to strip them down and tidy up some of the foliage on top, just so we're not overpowering the bouquet. So. It's what the small piece here, yeah. just to sit discreetly, like so. Another rose, going to remove those guard petals. And you can really see that this is now starting to take shape. Okay, so with the wax flower, I'm just going to separate them and work them around the other side of the rose. So it looks like you've got two stems in there, but in fact, you've only got the one. Okay, and some more baby's breath or gypsophilia. Bring it around here, like so. Okay. With the wax flower, I'm going to bring some more in just at the other side. So you can just see there, it's starting to take shape. Now I'm going to bring in my Lizzie Amphus. And as you can see, these are on rather large bunches. So again, I'm going to cut this one, remove any leaves. 
because you don't want to overwhelm the bouquet with all the additional leaves that come with some of these flowers. Some of these are still in bud, which is absolutely fine. I think the buds are quite pretty and give it some contrast. So again, removing all the leaves, just going to place this in here. This is actually starting to look really pretty and quite elegant baking. So again, if you find you have too many eucalyptus leaves, you can just simply snip one off. Okay, so another rose. Just remove the guard leaves. Or should I say guard petals? On that as well. It really doesn't damage the flower the more that you remove. So I'm going to go for another piece of eucalyptus. This does take practice and can be a bit fiddly at first to hold the bouquet and to work your way around with the foliage. Just stripping that down, I'm just going to add a piece of this in as well like so. And I'm going to go for another rose. I'm going to strip in the guard petals. I probably sound like a broken record. like so. Okay. So another one of my Veronica's. You can even give the stems a bit of a trim because if they are getting in your way. So it just makes it a little bit easier and it doesn't catch on the front of you or on the table. Okay. So again we're gonna go with some more wax flour. I'm not going to put too much wax flour in this bouquet, but just enough to give it that variety and, and to bring in that nice blush pink colour. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave that here. Because like I said before, these two pieces are actually one piece and you can just manoeuvre them around the flowers. Okay, so you can see the stems are starting to take place in that spiral shape as well. And I'm just going to go around adding some more of the flowers in no particular order, but you just need to have a look. And it's sometimes best to do this in front of a mirror so you can actually see where the flowers are positioned. I'm going to remove some of these buds, although I like them. I think too many can be a bit of an overkill. Okay, and then for another rose. So. And if you're practicing or just beginning uh, arranging bouquets, you can in fact tie the bouquet and this just holds things in place as you go. And a lot of these aren't wasted because what I do is with these off cuts you can reuse them in buttonholes or corsages, um, you can wire them into other bouquets as you see fit. Okay, so you really can't see this taking place now. I'm just going to use a bit more eucalyptus. Also, when making a bouquet, you need to take into consideration the size of your bride. Um, the bride that I'm designing this bouquet for is quite a slim bride, so we don't want anything too large or overpowering for her. Yeah. 
So when you blow into a rose, it just slightly opens up the centre a little bit more. And some more Veronica. I love this Veronica. I just think it's a really pretty flower and it's got tiny, tiny little flowers and petals. I think it just adds a nice touch to the bouquet. This one here. A little piece over here as well. You have to be very careful because it does stick to each other when you have these large bunches. Some more foliage, I think. I think this foliage just got a really dainty, dainty touch. So the bouquet that the bridal is going for is a countryside, so it's not a, a neat handheld circular bouquet um, with a variety of foliage and, and flowers. leaves and I'll take some of these bumps off. Just be very careful when cuttings the buds because you have to cut into the flower and damage the flower. Okay so I think I need some more wax flower in this side. Just add that here like so. Another one of my rosies. Like so. so as you can see, this bouquet is really starting to take shape with a variety of different flowers, different shades, different textures, very pleasing to the eye. So over here, I'm just going to have another piece of this glimmer. Like so. And then what you need to do is just have a look at your bouquet. Take a look at it and just see where there's, there's a gap or anything is missing or doesn't quite balance out correctly. So I'm going to have some more gypsophilia. Here. Two pieces now. So also when you're making a hand tied bouquet, you need to make sure your centre flower is slightly higher than the rest and then you need to lay yourself around the bottom, giving it the domed shape that you want. Okay, just not cutting these perfectly straight, but just so they're not catching at all. Okay, so again, just review your bouquet and just see where there's a gap or anything missing. So I'm actually going to go for another rose just here. And move my Veronica over there. Like so, and I think that just finishes the lovely dome shape that we have. 
finish it with a bit more gypsophilia, just here, around the edge, like so. So, a bit more foliage. I really love this foliage because it's really elegant and, and dainty. Just gives it that nice touch. So what I'm going to do is work my way around the bottom of the bouquet with this fine, elegant foliage. Another piece of estoma. So again, pointing the flowers diagonally into here in the foliage. Like so. Yeah. And I think I need one more rose, and I think that's all the flowers completed then. So, just go for another rose, remove the leaves, and the guard petals, pop her in like so. And I think that is the completed shape of all the flowers now. And it's just a case of, like I said, going around the edge, making sure you remove anything like here I've left on. Some rose leaves. One thing that will save you time, especially when you're first starting out, is prepping your flowers in advance. So defawning all your roses, cutting off all the leaves, all the additional leaves, and um, just making sure oh, everything is prepped nicely. And that re really will save you some time. Okay, so I think this bouquet is perfect. So, again, just cut the long stems. I'm going to take some string. And I'm just going to wrap it round. So I'm not going to do it too tight, because I may need to change it. And then what I like to do is just take a look at my bouquet and make sure everything is okay with it and if I need to make any adjustments then I can. So this way you need a couple of pairs of hands. Okay so so we cut them so they're a bit more level and then what you should be able to do I just clear some of this base is stand your bouquet up like so. So now I can go to eye level and adjust and technically give it a little bit of a haircut. You can just snip off any foliage that may be too much or sticking out too far above the rest of the bouquet. You can manoeuvre foliage around so they're peeping through discreetly among the flowers. If any of your flowers have slightly slipped you can move them around and pull them back up like this Veronica had slipped down slightly. Um, you can turn it around at different angles and you can really manoeuvre your bouquet to exactly how you would like it to look for the bride. And you do this before you tighten the bouquet and, and um, add the ribbon. Okay, so... And sometimes, once you manoeuvre everything around, you may need to add an additional rose or or stem of foliage. Okay, let's just push the bouquet out, like so. Just make sure it's perfect for the bride. Okay, so I do believe I am going to add one more rose, and I keep saying that, but I just think it needs one more around the back. So although you've tied it, don't worry. All you need to do is add the rose 
diagonally at the back just to, to give it that gap and then I'm going to give it another piece of gypsophilia and the trouble with live flowers as well is they do all come in different shapes and sizes majority of the time they're exactly the same um, but you do get the odd ones that don't quite open up the same um, that may they may lay differently so when they're fully open they may not lay flat they're quite pointed on top especially with the roses so don't worry about that you just need to maneuver them to where they would best sit within the bouquet okay I think that's beautiful and I think it's ready for finishing off first of all with a hand tie just going to quickly tie these ones that I've added and when you're doing this just be very careful not to catch the flowers okay so with a hand tie you need to make sure that you have a good two hands worth on your stem for the bride to hold and then you need probably about another inch after that of stem showing after the ribbon. This is just how I like to do it um, and how I was taught at college and how most brides request their bouquets as well. Some have the, the stems fully ribboned um, but most of the time on hand ties you do have the bottom stem showing and another good reason for this is so the stems can drink so you can leave the flowers in water overnight and during the morning before the wedding especially if it's a late one but if you do leave them in water you only literally need to leave one or two centimeters of water because what you don't want to do is the flowers to drink the water and the ribbon to absorb it and then you know that would not be very pretty for the bride should have a wet ribbon and it'd get really grubby really quickly because these stems obviously are live flowers and they do leak off kind of juices and, and green residue from the from the stems so going back to the size i'm going to get my two hands and then with this one i'm gonna with my floristry scissors just cut them so they're equal you need to be quite strong for this sometimes Some of these stems are really stubborn. <laughs> okay, so now the bouquet stand in. One last little adjustment. Another thing with roses is you want to make sure you make your bouquet when the roses are at their best, when they're in full bloom and, um, and they're looking their best. And I can see straight away from here, I have a gap in the eucalyptus. I'm just going to take this stem over there. Okay, so I have my extra piece of eucalyptus and it's almost like I've done this on purpose just to show you how to add one in. So you can see here, I have a eucalyptus over this side, but none on this side. So take your piece of eucalyptus maneuver your flowers gently because you don't want to snap your rose head and then just simply add it in at an angle and just maneuver the leaves so you can spread them out among the rows and again you now need another piece of string I'm afraid so just to hold this one on and that's that Okay, so now we have our string in place and I've trimmed it. So I've cut all the additional parts off um, and not too close to my double knot, otherwise the knot will come undone. I then take my ribbon and I place it with my finger like so, as close as I can to the bottom of the flowers. Then holding them upside down, I wrap my ribbon several times in the same place, just ensuring it's covering all that string and all the knots and then what I start to do is make my way around the stems spiraling downwards slightly overlapping the ribbon I do double wrap so I go over it several times 
quite close together so it's up to you how generous you want to be on the ribbon um, and how big you want the, the overlay to be. But I just think it gives a nicer finish if we have a thicker ribbon. Okay, so keep continuing downwards like so. Until we get to about there. And then what I do is go around a couple more times like that. Right, so to hold this ribbon on, I'm going to use some pins. But you need to figure out where the front of the bouquet will be because I like to add my pins here at the bottom just to secure the ribbon and that will be the back of your bouquet. So just have a look at your bouquet and have a look to see where the prettiest point of the bouquet is. I've just seen a petal I don't like so I'm just going to remove that. So I think the front of my bouquet will be here where I've got my wax flower, my stoma, and my baby's breath, my gypsophilia. Okay. So, I take my ribbon. So because I've already got two layers on, I work it backwards and make that the back of my bouquet. And then what I like to do is using ribbon scissors. Never use the same scissors for ribbon or for foliage and flowers. So I have pink ones for my ribbon and then I have my floral ones for my flowers. And these are florist scissors to cut foliage and stems. Um, and these were just normal scissors that I got from a, a DIY, um, like a hobby craft store. Okay, so what I do is I cut my ribbon. Like so. And then I fold it under twice, like that. So let me try that again for you. I fold it under twice, like so. And then with the pins, my bride is going for the diamante pins, but I normally another popular pin type is the pearl. So with the diamante pin, I'm going to point upwards. And the reason I do that is so the pin doesn't come through and cut the bride's hand. Okay, so I use two pins and that will be the back of the bouquet. Next, I have another addition to the ribbon. And then at the front of my bouquet, which I'm now looking at, I'm going to try and tilt it and work kind of upside down. So at the front of my bouquet, my bride has chosen to have this little crystal heart. So again, I don't know if you can see this very well. And I have washed my hands, but unfortunately part of a florist's job is to have stained green fingers and it's quite hard to get out. But whenever you make a bridal bouquet, before you do the ribbons, you do need to scrub and wash your hands because you don't want to get any of the greenery on the ribbon. So with this heart, I've cut a piece of my ribbon and what I'm going to do is fold it like so and just poke it through from the back of the heart to the front. Just giving it that effect. Okay, so just adjust your ribbon so it's as straight as possible like so. The reason I've used a thick one and not a thin ribbon is because with a thinner ribbon, um, which was a mistake I made many, many years ago when I used to add um, additional jewels or decoration to bridal bouquets, was with a slimmer ribbon, the heart may go lopsided, it may kind of droop or slip because the, the ribbon's a lot thinner and not as strong. So I always use the same width ribbon that I have done on the bouquet and it just gives it that stability. So I'm then going to add it to the front of the bouquet, like so, and then I will turn my bouquet around, so make sure it's on the opposite side to your pins at the front. Okay, and once I have that secured, I'm just going to do this off camera because I don't think I can do this upside down. I'm going to um, pin it in place. 
So hopefully I've got another camera here, so hopefully I might be able to show you. So from the opposite side. So fiddly when you're trying to film it and show you at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna add that on, bring my ribbon round. And again, I'm going to secure it with a diamante stud, just like I have the bottom ribbon. And again, pointing upwards. And then all I do is simply cut the ribbon there, and then the additional piece in. So now I have that in place, I take the pin out, I fold. It just gives you a neater finish if you fold the ribbon because you don't get the cut edge that frays. So fold, oh sugar, sorry. Told you it was tricky. So you fold the one underneath, hold it, fold the one on top, hold it, get your pin, poke it through the ribbon to where my finger now is and up like so and then that will secure it and then you have your beautiful heart diamante detail and then at the back you have your three pins okay so when you deliver this to the bride you do need to explain the position of the bouquet and where the pins sit okay so thank you for watching today um, i hope you enjoyed my tutorial Remember it is tricky, it's taken years of practice for us florists to be able to, to manoeuvre the bouquet whilst adding. So remember, one tip, if you're right-handed, hold the bouquet in your left hand and insert the flowers with your right hand at an angle. So like so, and then work your way around the bouquet. And the, the way you know it's done correctly is at the end, you should be able to stand it up because you have that spiral shape in the stems that push outwards. I will have more content coming up, so please subscribe, stay tuned, and I will see you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.